The Fableman stars Gabriel LaBelle, Paul Dano, Michelle Williams, and Seth Rogen, and is directed by Steven Spielberg. It follows the story of the young Sammy Fableman, who is a surrogate for Spielberg himself, and his growing passion for the art of filmmaking. He grows up with his parents, played by Paul Dano and Michelle Williams, and his several sisters, and in the beginning, when he's going to the cinema for the very first time as a really young kid, he's played by Matteo Zoyan, and then he grows, as he grows older into teenagehood, he's played by Gabriel LaBelle, and it depicts his home life, his school life, his family life, uh, and his growing passion for amateur filmmaking. It's not exactly a new thing, established filmmakers making films recounting their childhood or early years. In the last few years, there was Alfonso Cuaron's Roma, Kenneth Branagh's Belfast, Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird, Mike Mills's 20th Century Women, which is supremely underrated, and I'd even throw in Bill Burr's animated series F is for Family on Netflix, which for my money, is the second best animated sitcom about a working class family after The Simpsons. Going back even further, there is Terrence Malick's The Tree of Life, Cameron Crowe's Almost Famous, Noah Baumbach's The Squid and the Whale, and many more. This time, Spielberg is having a crack, and you know what? It's pretty good. The opening scene sees like five or six year old Spielberg going to the cinema for the first time to see Cecil B. DeMille's uh, the greatest show on earth, and there's a scene in the film of like a harrowing train crash. And uh, to put it mildly, it kind of traumatizes the kid, but it also fascinates him. And it's from this moment on that he realizes this is what he wants to do. And upon this harrowing train crash, he sort of has traumatic flashbacks over it, but he recreates it in his basement with model trains and films it, uh, developing his passion. Now I can relate to the concept of being traumatized by a film as I'm sure many people can, uh, film lovers or otherwise. A lot of people have that one movie that they saw at too young of an age that just scared the shit out of them. For me, however, it wasn't anything like Jaws or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Poltergeist. My parents were incredibly strict on keeping me nowhere near the horror genre as a young boy. For me, it was the comedic drama film about a boy, starring Hugh Grant, Tony Collette, and Nicholas Holt. And the film is about a young boy whose mother is very depressed, and in a scene in the film, she commits suicide. This concept of a boy's mother committing suicide just hit me like a train. Get it? Like with Spielberg and the train crash? It filled my head with dark thoughts, like what if my mother attempted suicide? Like what would I do? Where would I be? This movie messed me up for a good few years, and I wasn't even super young when I saw it, like 11 or 12, but it's this film that did give me the utmost respect and like admiration and the passion for filmmaking and making films. And I really like the movie to this day, it is a really good film. Because films can have the power to make you think and feel in a deeply profound way, and yeah, this is like what happened with Spielberg in the movie. He saw the train crash, scared the shit out of him, but gave him the drive to make films. So what I'm saying is that I am Spielberg, and of course that inherently means that I'm as clever and talented and amazing as he is, because I've led the same life. But all jokes aside, The Fablemans is very good, and technically speaking, it's super cinematic. Uh, the film is lensed by longtime collaborating cinematographer Janusz Kaminski, and even though the movie is largely a domesticated drama about family, uh, there are some spectacular shots, and overall it's really cinematic. Even just in simple scenarios like high school prom and loads of other spectacular camera work throughout the film, uh, and the performances are really good, most notably the kids. Um, yeah, Sammy Fableman, his sisters, his school friends are all really great. Seth Rogen is fantastic in this film, and it's just awesome seeing him in a Steven Spielberg movie, because I think he is really talented, both comedically and dramatically, when he gets a serious role. This movie is at times really funny, especially in the scenes where Spielberg and his crew are making short films, and they use some really nifty low-budget uh, techniques to bring war and western movies to life, which obviously Spielberg was fond of growing up and clearly is to this day. I actually have a funny cinema experience seeing this movie, and I am going to get into some minor cameo-related spoilers here, so if you haven't seen The Fablemans but want to and you don't want to know anything, just end the video here. Overall, I thought it was great, but definitely a bit over long. There's a scene where they go camping, which goes on for too long, and probably several other scenes throughout that could have been trimmed a little bit. 150 plus minutes is really pretty long for this type of film, but overall, it's really good. So I went to a screening of this not knowing I'd gone to the wrong time, and me thinking I'd only walked in a few minutes late, 
uh, I got in around the point where they're getting a pet monkey. And uh, f about 50 minutes later, the credits rolled and I realized I'd missed approximately the first hour and 20 minutes. And I was really shocked and confused and disappointed. Uh, but I have seen the film uh, in full since then, hence my reviewing it here. However, the very last sequence sees teenage Spielberg going to meet with legendary Western director John Ford. And this whole scene was masterful. It was intense and hilarious, and I had no idea it was going to be the final scene of the film. The big surprise is John Ford is played by David Lynch, and you can't even recognize him. He has this cap on, this eye patch, this army jacket type thing, and he's just lighting up and smoking this huge massive cigar, uh, where it's comparable to the opening pipe smoking sequence of Inglorious Bastards. When I realized it was David Lynch, and it took me a while to realize, I my jaw was legitimately dropped throughout the whole scene, and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's a scene where Spielberg, being a mega fan, just wants to make a good impression, and maybe even learn a thing or two. And John Ford, being John Ford, a gruff, grizzled, prickly, mean old man, is just figuratively kicking this meek kid all over his office, shouting at him and yelling and just being a dick. And I've been in a few similar situations in my time, a few job interviews here and there, and not to mention encounters with a particular film school lecturer I had back in the day. Whew. I'm a sucker for a gangbusters final end scene to a film. I was one of those idiots who watched the Darth Vader scene at the end of Rogue One thinking, holy shit, this is fucking awesome! Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, another great final end scene with the showdown with the Manson family members. I just love a crazy last scene of a movie, and for me, The Fablemans can be added to that list. And so that's The Fablemans, that's all my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you thought of it uh, down below, and I'll see you in the next video.